All right. Hello and what's up, my pirate people? Hope everyone is doing all right. What I have here today is my Red Luffy deck. It's been my favorite deck for a while and it's been strong and in my opinion, still strong and ready for this new upcoming format. We have, uh, in addition to this, many new deck profiles coming out, so make sure you stay subscribed for more. Anyways, we're going to uh, start out right now with the Red Leader card. So he's very similar to the Red Zoro, which is a deck profile I've done before, and I've switched over to him because I just think he's a little better, and the deck has to switch up to, in order to help him. But yeah, just every single time there's a Rested Dawn, you just give it to another guy. It's pretty much free power every single turn, and you'll never miss it. So first, we're going to start off with four choppers. It's your only blocker of the deck, so it's, it's just there for that reason, and you play them only when you need them. If you see him in the beginning, throw him, and then use him because he will get killed off by effects. It always happens, so I say just use him when you immediately can. Up next, we've got four of your searching Nami. Obviously, you're going to need four of these. You're always going to want to mulligan if you don't see her. That's who you prioritize seeing. Next up, you got the two Nami, the one that gives extra rested dawns to a character. I only put two because, like I said, she's going to end up dying a lot early on so it's, she's not going to give you too much advantage for the long one but it's definitely very good in the start and she can kill over weak characters and of course we got otama she is the one that combos off with jet pistol the best and if not it's a 2k counter very powerful i always love to see four of hers next up i've decided to run four of the rushing sanji only because with this leader effect, it essentially is only a three cost rusher because two resting Dawn to play him, then Luffy will give one the rested Dawn to him. So that's already he'll be at one for the effect, then just pass over another. So it's three for a 6k power rusher, technically better than the rushing Zoro at that point. It's three for six in a way. So yeah, then I'm playing two of Brook, also for the same reason of Luffy for the rushing Sanji. This is basically a combo. If you want to call it that, you would play Brook down, then Sanji. Well, first Sanji, you have two rested, then play Brook, give him two of your rest down. He's already all loaded up for his uh, effect to become a rusher. So just two of him. And if you don't need to play him, you have a 2k blocker, a 2k counter, I mean. Next up, a couple of another 2k counters. If you want to use it for that, if not, you use them to unbreak your hand. On play, you place a card from your hand at the bottom of the deck and draw one. Not bad. I'll just play him at two. Up next, got the Rushing Zoro. Very self-explanatory. Three cost, five rushing. Like I said, it's this deck is all about having maybe one or two strong characters on board. I'm not trying to make this deck like a control or anything in a way. Except for the Robins, as you'll see. But basically, you play him. You can rush at six power with him. So best card next up i'm playing three of nico robin again she's just there to scare anybody from playing lower characters lower level characters in 3k power or less it always makes people fearful of that unless they have to rest her with an effect or ko her with an effect so always good i might bump her up to four that's definitely something i'd consider up next i've got one uta Simple, just add a red character on play that's in your trash to your hand that's three cost or less. This is always, I always choose the rushing Zoro. So you rush once with Zoro, attack, he probably dies the next turn, and use her, pick him up, and use him again. Not bad at all. You can even pick up the blockers, it picks up the searching, I mean, it just picks up everything good. One of hers is fine. Next up, the other star of the show is four of the five cost rushing Luffy. And again, he needs two Dawn to use the effect to make him unblockable. And that's where the Luffy leader comes in. So it helps him out. You don't even have to pay one extra more. So four, you want to rush down your opponent for this build that I have. Next up, we've got... I put in a couple of Ben Beckmans. He's powerful. He's just a vanilla 7 cost 9 key power. I love his numbers because he, he you have to use more than Otama and uh, Jet Pistol to kill him. So it's... Kind of impress him in in that point. He's not very easily killable. And he's easy to protect because he's at 9k power. So I'm running exactly two of him's. Next up, I actually have two of Shanks. The 9 cost rushing guy. 
He's not searchable by any means, so that's why I just put him at two, because one will probably go to the bottom of the deck with the searching Nami effect. So one is a good, nice little scare for your opponent at the end. During endgame, they won't see it coming. So, yeah, that's the strongest rusher you got. Next up, for the new stuff that we're playing, I'm actually playing one of Edward Newgate. So this guy, I just added one of him in the deck recently, because on play, up to one of your lead against 2,000 power until the start of your next turn. So the other effect has to do with wipe your powers about adding life, so don't worry about that. But basically, this Monkey D. Luffy will go to 2,000 power, and it's last for in total of two turns, so your opponent has to hit for over 7k on him. So it's actually not a bad effect. The other part is, when attacking, if he has two down, KO up to one of your opponent's characters with 3,000 power or less. So essentially, he'll kill off a little blocker or something for you, so you don't have to worry about it. So not a bad card overall. I was thinking of putting him at two, maybe instead of Shanks. But that's up to your preference, basically. I mean, both these guys are not searchable, and they do different excellent effects. So I just put one of him. Another new guy I decided to add is just a couple of Vistas on play. You just KO an opponent's card with 3,000 power or less. So yeah, another way to get rid of blockers because this deck just summons single guys out very powerful to keep rushing into stuff. So they'll try to flood the field with blockers. So that's where Vista comes into hand and characters like Robin, Nico Robin. Next up, I'm playing a couple of Diable Jambe. It's the card that lets anybody become unblockable when you're attacking. Well, when you're Straw Hat guys. So very good for the late game. I always... A strategy I do with this card is that I always hold on to it. If I open it, I hold on to it to the very last turn of their very last life. Because they'll probably have some blockers on. Boom, you activate Diablo Jambe. Ignore all their blockers and just go for a game and load up the rest of your Dawn on one guy. Very good card. Have it at two. Next, I have one guard point. This is the card that just throws off everyone's math because you have one Dawn. And you get to give 3k power. People usually attack on a 5k leader, for example. 7k as a magic number to hit so guard point comes in and pushes them at three for basically one cost so you just have to leave one active dawn not a bad idea up next we've got i'm playing two of gum gum fire fist pistol red hawk this one is another good counter it's cost two though but it's it'll also kill an opponent's character with 4,000 power less so you want to hold it until you get to do that extra ability so that's where that comes in handy. I was thinking of cutting it to one, but it's not the worst card. It has a decent trigger. It makes one of your opponent's characters useless for the turn. Well, yeah, only two of those. Next up, the best card in the whole game, which I still think is one of the best cards in the entire game because it's ridiculous trigger, is your Jet Pistol. KO an opponent's character, 6,000 power less, trigger, use its main effect. You'll love to see it. You'll love to see it in your life file. If you see at least two of these in your life file and they go off, you kind of won the game already. It's it's ridiculous and it's going to stay ridiculous for the next format as well. So that's basically it for the whole deck profile. I'm going to lay it out for you so you can see everything ratio-wise. And things that I'd consider adding, I've left on the side here to swap out for some cards. I put another Edward Newgate. Like I said, maybe instead of a Shanks, if you don't like Shanks, he's still really powerful for the new format. A couple of the Sanjis that are 2Ks. This is just a pickup life. And to have a ridiculous beat stick, if you want to find one for him, probably take out two of the rushing Sanjis if that's not your thing to put so many rushes in here. And then there's Sabaody card. This is the one that lets you just search for a guy. I, I used to like to play this at one or two because if you don't open Nami, this should give you your Nami, you know, you hope. <laughs> and then there's another Uta because, again, picks up uh, the lower cost characters, which are plentiful in this deck. And then another Gordon. Again, if you break with some card, just place, draw a card. And he's not bad. Two for 3k. He'll be strong the next turn when he attacks. So these are the ones I consider to add. And then I'm going to just lay out the deck for you for you to see. Okay, everyone. So this is the full deck profile with full view of the ratios. If you wanted to look at it this way. And also, I wanted to mention that we had a giveaway in our previous video, and we will be announcing winners for that in the next video that we make. Because we like doing secret giveaways over here at the end of our video sometimes. So, thanks for watching. Hope you have a good one. Peace.